Me so I die. So what? I mean, it's going to happen anyway. More fatalistic. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so what did you and your wife do here during the day? What's uh, that? What did you and your wife do after you moved oh, here? Oh, uh, she was just basically uh, taking care of things around the house. Uh, she uh, liked to walk a lot and stuff. And it's we have a nice little place to walk a little park right down by the lake. It's private here too and it, uh, uh, I, I did quite a bit of fishing mm -hmm. and uh, until a couple of years ago the friend that I used to go with all the time he had a stroke and mm -hmm. we haven't been since but uh, and now I'm not sure if I could make it. My canoe's laying out there that I uh, haven't used that for a while either but that's uh, part of growing up that uh, just uh, I just know I got to slow down. That we're talking bucket list. That originally, <clears throat> shortly after the wife died and stuff, I wanted to, to go back and visit my friends in Minnesota and go up to Canada and fish. And I've been doing that. I've done it for six years each summer. Go back for oh two or three months and stayed back there camping along the way and stuff. And I'm hoping I can do it this year, but I'm not real sure if I'm going to make it or not. You have someone to go with you, right? No, I go alone. Oh. Yeah, no. If I had someone to go with me, it wouldn't be any consideration at all, but uh, I go alone and camp along the way and uh, I, I enjoy the traveling. Uh, uh, I, I find much satisfaction in sitting along the shore of a lake or a river in the evening and just looking. And uh, the well, I've got that Honda out there that I've been using for the past couple of years. I've got it rigged up with a uh, a bed in it and stove and ice box and all that and I'm right now considering buying my daughter's Volkswagen. She has a, a newer model than that old one that's sitting of mine out there. That doesn't have an air conditioner and I can't travel in the summer without an air conditioner anymore. I'm just kidding. So uh, I'm, I'm considering doing that and, and but that's still all up in the air. That, uh, the, uh, but that's on my bucket list, and then, like I say, that buck, uh, that was on my bucket list, but I've done it now for a couple of years. And I, I amaze myself when I'm sitting alone on a lake in kind of remote Canada and saying, here, for a 93-year-old guy to be able to sit up here enjoying fishing, that's kind of remarkable. Yeah, yeah it's, it's very it, remarkable. It's, uh, and I've been very fortunate along those lines. So. Yeah. So that's a, a part of the bucket list stuff, and I want to fly that airplane yet. Oh, and my other one was ride a horse, but I had a chance to do that up in Oregon oh, yes. last year, two years ago. That uh, I didn't get up on them the way I used to, but we had a little stand, and I climbed up on that horse, <laughs> rode well, around for a, a little very while. Tall horse. Yeah, yeah, and, uh, and that was that was a nice experience. I liked that. Wow. But, wow. Uh, well, what, did you have any other hobbies besides fishing when you were? Living? I'm sorry. Did you have any other hobbies and things besides fishing? Oh, I, uh, I uh, uh, have done. Uh, when I was teaching too, I taught some woodworking and I built a lot of stuff. And in, in my garage, I've got power saws and all that. And uh, uh, oh, I just see that thing that the plant is in that wooden box there. I've built that. Oh, that's and, nice. uh, oh I, I built all kinds of junk around here, <laughs> and, uh, furniture and stuff like that. If I if if <clears throat> if I can't walk, then I've got some Japanese chisels that I can do uh, um, carving and stuff with Japanese chisels, laying in a bed or sitting on a chair and stuff. I can do that. And if my if my eyes go bad, then my thought is that I will try and develop a talent for music instead of just a desire for it. But right now, I still, oh, almost on a daily basis, I'll play some instrument a little bit and. Uh, <clears throat> But I figured if I ever go blind, I might maybe maybe it would come to me then. I don't know, but it's a, and my hearing is not good either, as, as you well observe. And so therefore, the quality of music that I hear is not good, and uh, I have a problem well, you know, with as that. As long as you enjoy doing it. Oh yes, uh -huh, yeah. I'm, I'm fortunate there that I can that, and feel well enough to do it yeah. stuff most of the time. Like right now here talking with you, I'm in absolutely no discomfort. I feel I don't have full control. I hope <laughs> I'm not spitting at you and stuff, oh, yeah. but I, I feel sometimes things don't go right here. And as long as I'm sitting and not trying to walk, my legs don't give me any problem. And even when I try to walk, they don't hurt, fortunately. Right. That they don't respond, 
they don't hurt. And I'm working on that with doctors and trying to figure out what's wrong. Nobody knows. So uh, old age, I guess. Uh, but, uh, what else you got? Oh, well, Don, anything else before we do the tour? Uh, we can go ahead and start on the tour here. Is it okay if I uh, Yes, you certainly do. Anything at all. Yeah, that's our wedding picture so from Florida, 1944. Okay, 1944. Yeah, this is a. Uh, let's see, what was I here? So, uh, uh, let's see. First, can, first class radio one. If you it, can, Thank you, Don. Okay. And then go ahead. Thank you so much. Okay, perfect. fine. I've got to watch so the reflection isn't in there. Yeah, the, the first class radio what one there. What a great photo. Please describe that again. Thank you. I'm sorry? Please describe that again. What a great photo. Yeah. Uh, uh -huh. Okay, so that's your wedding picture? Yes, uh -huh. okay. this is our wedding picture. Wow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what year is that? 1943. Three. Three. October. Nine, October 17th. <laughs> yeah. Oh, hey, your yeah. birthday, Donald. And oh, no you kidding. Could, uh, huh? You could say your wife's name again? Madeline. Madeline. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, how did you meet her one more time? Uh, that we were. Uh, you, you, don't, you, you didn't say one more time because you didn't ask me the first yeah, time. Okay. But that's neither here nor there because it was such a stuff. That I used to. I'll say just with her that if I say pick up, you know what I'm talking about, relationship? Okay, well, I, I tell people when they ask me that I picked her up at a roller rink. She came roller skating with one of her girlfriends while I was going to radio school in Alameda, and I was down there with a couple other sailors, and I saw her on the, on the skating rink. And uh, Madeline was uh, very tall. She was five feet, ten and a half inches tall, and she stood out height-wise above most of the other girls, and that just looked good to me. And, uh, and uh, we met on the roller rink there, and then I went skating a couple of times and met her folks. And, and car carried and on from there. And the rest is history. Yeah, that's, that's <laughs> no, basically That's a, uh -huh. a model-worthy smile there. It really is. I'm sorry? She's Her model smile. worthy. What a smile! Oh yes, what, uh -huh. a, what a face! Yeah, what a yeah this woman. is this isn't wow. the picture. It's uh, no, I'll, I'll show you the uh, one of the pictures that. Now, oops. The back is. That's okay. Back that's this, okay. Uh, that's fine. Well, I know you'll yeah, I, I know what this. Is. I had this done, that, that when I was uh, when I was in the Philippines that the uh, artists would come aboard ship and take orders, and that there's that other one of me, too. They would make these. I don't know what they are, if they're crayon or what they are, but they would Pastels, take and maybe. make and make these things uh, for, for us when we were yeah. aboard, aboard ship. But uh, this was, oh, 1950, what would this be? This would be, oh, 55, something like that, 1955. Wow. But, uh, <clears throat> But that's what she is. Those uh, are nice. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. hey, you got it backwards. That's okay. I'm actually just going to gently. You can just let them lay there, Don. That's okay. We'll, we'll get them squared away later. Yeah. I'll do okay. And. Uh, what, okay. Well, this uh, this was taken just about Newfoundland time. Uh, late 50s. Uh, that's uh, my daughter, uh, Carol, in the in the center, where she's, uh, oh, I guess just not quite in high school. Yeah, not quite in high school. Uh huh. Yeah, that's right. And, uh, uh, I wow. don't know, I don't know what the occasion was. Maybe just a family picture. I don't recall. That is pretty. That is a nice picture. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that was Newfoundland. Mm. Now, who's this ha handsome gentleman? Oh. <laughs> Oh, this is me in my Snoopy days when I'm out to go and get fight the Red Baron, World <laughs> War One. Yeah, this I guess. Oh, I'm sure these are not the original wings I had, but this is uh, uh, when I was in in flight training in Dallas in 1943 when when we uh, were flying these M2Ss and they gave us these white scarves and goggles and all that stuff and that was that was our goal i don't Very know picturesque. If that, yeah that was our goal that big day when we got to put this stuff on wow big big day that's yeah i can see you got the big smile yeah uh-huh yeah that's uh, uh, got it oh. uh, i'll just set this thing here that's fine oh, okay no, no problem oh, here's your hat oh geez oh you hey i sure like the way you got things organized that's good 
Okay, where do we go here first? Here, I'll go here, because this is the. Uh, it's, it's got a show here. This is the uh, squadron that I was in, VP12, and that they are the original Black Cats. That uh, when we went down, the term originated because of the missions that we flew, and the planes were all painted completely black at that time. In theory, the enemy couldn't see them as well at night, and I'm told that there were times that they feel they didn't get shot at because even if the searchlight would hit the plane and if there were no clouds right up above that it would outline it, that, that the black that didn't show that well against the night sky and they couldn't see it. Some guys have, have reported of uh, seeing uh, a light when you're, when you're patrolling and seeing a light come in the plane from a searchlight down below and then of course everybody starts expecting that they're going to get shot at and stuff but nothing <laughs> happened they said because the ground crew couldn't see them I mean they so I don't I don't know I don't, that's one of the stories and then uh, let's see then this is a that I just uh, picked it up in Hawaii this time that it's that for the 75th anniversary of Pearl Harbor that uh, a rather momentous period out there that it was a, 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 a very, very rewarding experience. I certainly am pleased to have made it. That, uh, well, let's take a, a second, Don, and talk uh, about uh, December 7th, 2016. Uh, how'd your time go out there? And also, uh, I guess you've taken some other flights of valor. Uh, tell us about your activities. Um, recently uh, with the veterans organizations. Very please. good. Okay, I'll see what I can do there. Well, the way uh, that uh, uh, I w I've been aware of the, <coughs> excuse me, of the, uh, oh, what do they call it going back to, uh, to Washington, this group, Honor Flight. I've been aware of that for a few years. I was on their list and then I didn't hear anything for a long time. And, and then a couple of years ago, I called them again and got assigned to the group that works out of San Jose down here. And, and they set me up and my grandson and I were able to, not this last September, year ago September, went back to Washington on one of their trips. I was very, very impressed with the, with the whole way they had it set up. I had not been to Washington for quite a few years and uh, a lot of new things there. The Air Force Memorial and of course the uh, uh, Mount Suribachi thing. And the uh, one that impressed me the most of the new the World War II Memorial, I mean, I'd never seen either, but the, the, to me the very impressive one was Vietnam. That uh, I've since been reading about her story and read the things that she was thinking when she designed this thing and the problems that I'm sure within her mind and the mind of the American public that had to be overcome before they accepted her uh, proposal for that monument. To me, hers is the It's the most expressive monument I have ever seen. That uh, when we were there, the at the uh, the day that we were there, there was a group of gold, gold our mothers. Oh, gold star brothers, right? They were there too, and to, well, just the futility of the whole thing. These women would go up and touch their. Son, Sons' names are 